ask the coach the same question, but how, how many different ways has your life changed since you, since you swam or since you got home? Yeah, um, it's been pretty crazy, honestly. Really, um, I guess just with you know, social media following alone, um, just, you know, I guess everything just skyrocketing so fast and people like know who I am now. So that's a little strange. I actually went to Target the other day and like four or five like random people came up and hugged me and I'm like, oh, okay, like I don't know you. <laughs> that was a little weird. But I mean, other than that, I, I feel the same. Um, I know life's not the same, but I still feel like me and, uh, you know, like nothing's really changed too much. Uh, no, it was not. I don't know where that bag came from, but that is the official bag that carries my medals as of the last couple of weeks. So. <laughs> what was going through your, through your mind as you were going down the streets of your hometown, Evansville, during that parade, and you see all the signs in the businesses downtown? Yeah, we actually, we didn't have a parade. I just went down Wednesday um, for kind of a media tour. Day, so I just did like three interviews at the stations, but it was pretty cool, um, you know, seeing these businesses that I have never really seen before, gone into, um, you know, showing their support and having signs and like actually like nice like made signs that were made, not just like on the on the signs where you like put the letters in. Um, so it was pretty cool, just seeing all the support from home. After you made the comments you did about the doping, did you realize it was going to be as big a deal as it was? I mean, did you expect it to catch fire pretty quickly, or when did you realize? Yeah, I really didn't think that I said anything that bad, and I still don't think I said anything that bad. Um, but I didn't realize it until I was getting on the bus to leave um, after the semi that it had actually kind of exploded, and I was being referred to as a savage. Um, <laughs> I think that was the term. And uh, but yeah, I kind of got back to the village. I was eating uh, eating dinner, and you know my teammates were coming in, and they're like, "What did you do? What did you do?" And I'm like, oh, "I don't think I did anything." Um, but yeah, it was pretty pretty soon after that I realized what had come from it. Yeah, I actually had I had no intentions of planning to speak out. Um, and then they kind of caught me quite candid uh, in the ready room, kind of wagging my finger. So that was that was just purely me being my, uh, myself. And then, you know, I got out of my race and uh, went over to my NBC interview with Michelle Tafoya and she asked me about it and it you know, it came out also, didn't really realize I was saying anything horrible or speaking out, um, just kind of speaking my mind. And then, yeah, it kind of went from there. Yeah, uh, I mean, I think the motivation was already there. I mean, it was the Olympics. Um, but definitely a lot more pressure, I think. But usually I'm a lot better the more pressure you give me. So that was actually fine for me. Yeah, I actually, I really haven't seen anybody yet. Um, no one's really like come up to me. I haven't been wearing like USA Olympic team stuff out, so it's been a little bit easier. But my largest class has 14 in it, so um, it really, it really hasn't been that bad. Just out of curiosity, what was your first class back? Um, gymnastics. <laughs> I, I'm a phys ed major, so that's that's actually a required class. Yeah, teaching gymnastics and stunts. That was my first one. You were staring her down uh, before the final. Um, just to see if she'd look back at me. Um, <laughs> uh, that's kind of my thing. I know, you know, I'm, I know I sound crazy saying this now, but I'm not the most talented swimmer, and physically at least. Um, you know, I knew that growing up, I knew I'd have to put the work in to, to you know, become the best, and it wasn't just going to get there alone on talent, and I also learned that I'm really good at the mental game. So I kind of used that to my advantage with this one and, you know, staring people down, doing, you know, stuff like that that most people wouldn't think of, especially that a girl would do. Um, that's, that's definitely been a key thing for me in the past year. Attempt to be back a normal life thing you did when you got back here. Huh, what did I, like I just I just went to my friend's house and just kind of hung out for a while. Um, yeah, I just I just kind of I actually didn't tell anyone I was coming back early because I was supposed to stay through closing ceremonies, but the swimmers all um, actually ended up leaving, so I got my flight changed. Uh, so I came back. I told one one of my friends that I was coming back, and, and then I kind of surprised everybody that night uh, at one of the parties. So that was pretty that was pretty cool. Uh, just kind of getting to see everybody, and they had no idea I was coming. So that was a really fun moment. Continue. Oh, sorry. sorry. Okay. Will you continue 
to speak out like that? Or are you now like, oh my God, I don't want to go through that information? <laughs> um, you know, I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing that I'm the poster child for clean sport now. Um, you know, if I'm going to be the poster child for anything, I think that's a good thing. Um, you know, I guess I'm the poster child for playing it fair and not cheating, which is sad that there even has to be a poster child for that. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, if people feel the need to come to me to, you know, have the final word with something, uh, I guess, doping related, I'm fine with speaking out about that. Yes, I am. A lot, a lot, yeah. Um, the Russian backlash has been quite interesting. Uh, I try not to let it get to me too much. Half the time I can't read it because it's in Russian and I obviously do not speak Russian. So that's actually been kind of amusing to me. <laughs> but yeah, it is, it is a little frustrating at times when I'm, you know, I post a picture of me and one of my best friends on Instagram and you know, they're saying, you don't deserve your gold medal. That's a little frustrating. Um, but you know, I know that I'm right on every single thing that I said. So it's, it really doesn't bug me too much. Yeah. Um, really just adjusting. I think for me, probably just getting back into the swing of things like with meets, like our first couple dual meets are going to be hard for me. Um, just coming back from, you know, any international competition, let alone the Olympics, is going to be difficult motivation wise. Um, so, you know, I'm just going to have to, you know, look to my team to, I guess, get that little bit of extra motivation. And I know I need to swim fast for them. So, um, but yeah, I think that's definitely going to be my biggest struggle. Going to those dual meets, I mean, it's hard to compare them to the prestige of the Olympics. Right. How do you mentally have to prepare? You said you're good at the mental game, so mm -hmm. it's an easy adjustment to prepare and change mindsets. Again. Yeah, um, it is in, you know, in some aspect, but just getting excited to race again um, at a dual meet will be hard. Um, you know, I know that I will have certain races with certain people that I'm going to get excited for. Um, but, you know, it just, I guess, kind of our standard dual meet, like if we have an easy meet, that's, I'm not going to be real motivated to swim fast there. I mean, I will, but not like, you know, I'm not going to be going best times anytime, you know, during dual meets. Uh, Cody mentioned that, you know, you're still, uh, he's still on this Olympic high. Do you still feel that same kind of, same kind of way? Yeah, a little bit. I don't know. Cody's definitely on the high, I feel a little bit more than I am just because I'm getting back to school and um, more back to normal life. And he's getting married and doing all these adult things. So, you know, he's got a lot more to be excited for. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm, st I'm still like happy about it, but I'm definitely, I guess, coming down from, from that cloud. You know, obviously there was some blowback, you know, not just from the Russians, but a lot of support too, in terms of, mm -hmm. you know, after you made, take an ethical stand and you're honest about it, uh, what's the percentage of support been like? Yeah, the support's been great, um, especially from people back home. Um, you know, just, I don't know. There's something about people that are probably like my parents' age about like the U.S.-Russia thing, which I wasn't even really speaking out about Russia. She just happened to be Russian. Um, but, yeah, the support coming from home has been absolutely unreal. Um, you know, I think the race had been, I didn't realize the race had been hyped up so much until really I got back um, and you know, I was doing interviews with people and they're like, hey, I heard this and this. I'm like, people usually don't really watch my races too much. Um, so this one was just a little bit different in that aspect. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it is sad that that is, I guess, what people are focusing on now rather than how well the US Olympic team did. Um, because this was the greatest Olympic swim team we've ever had. Um, think of it, I guess, as the swimming dream team. Um, so it is sad that it's taking away from that, but you know, that's what happens when we do have to, I guess, come down from this, as I said, come down from this cloud at some point, and it just happens to be right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I, as I said, I always perform better at those meets with you know, more lights, more people, more pressure. Um, so I'm still, you know, I've done this before. I've come back from international competition and had to go swim, you know, like a rinky-dink meet. Um, so I'm just going to kind of stick with it and, and go race as hard as I can and, and see what comes out. <laughs> They've been in the plastic bag for a couple days now. I was actually walking out of the house and got a text that said, don't forget your medals. And I was like, oh crap, I gotta go get them. So I ran upstairs. And I was like, wait, 
where's the plastic bag? Where did I put them? <laughs> um, but I don't. No, no, um, Scott Burns, our media relations guy, who's basically been taking care of me the last week, or two weeks, or a month. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I have a really fancy wooden box for one of them, and I don't have the fancy wooden box for the other yet. I'm, I'm going to get it at some point. I don't know when. So I guess they'll go in the fancy boxes, but for now, they're in the plastic bag. <laughs> Yeah, we're really just looking to be breaking more barriers. Um, you know, that now that I have done that, there's really nothing more I can do. Anytime I go best time short course, it's going to be an American record. So that's a pretty cool thing to think about. Um, but, you know, especially in the 200 breast, I think I've been pacing to break two minutes in the 200, and um, I think that's what we're looking for this season, which, honestly, breaking two minutes in the 200 breast, especially for a woman, is absolutely unheard of, um, you know, considering the American record was 204 flat um, before NCAAs this year. So that's where my head's going. It was great. I mean, the things you don't see is that we're at training camp for a month before we go to Rio. Um, so, you know, just having, you know, Having something normal in that so unusual setting um, was just, you know, so great. And be, being without a coach for a month is is awful. And, you know, I don't know if you all have ever had to train without, you know, without somebody there that's always there for you. But it's pretty hard, um, especially going into the biggest meet of your life. So just having that one thing that was always like so stable um, was really good for me. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yep, thanks.